my hair. All right. <laughs> it's showtime, folks. Yes. Normally, we do the on-time drawing right about now, right? Yes. Normally, I'll go out there and hit that gong right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not going to hit the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we're not doing the on-time drawing. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yet. Uh, <laughs> we will be doing the drawing, and it's for a hundred dollar gift card. Oh, that's Texas de Brazil. Oh, Mila's looking oh, for number eight, oh, right? Oh my goodness. So uh, we're going to do that, and, and the reason why we're waiting is because we don't want any of you sneaky people to sign in and win and take off. Oh, or not win and take off. Uh, so this is to be forcing you to stay here. I know no, nobody here in this room would do something like that. No. All right. All right, so let's... Uh, Emily's not here today. So, um, so, but check in on Facebook, do it at the end, take pictures of speakers, make sure you use our hashtags up here, and um, our training schedule, Rev Up, Rev Up has switched to um, the Summerlin office. So modules two, three, and four, establishing brand, developing your farm, your databases, your business. I'm the instructor on that one. Next Wednesday, and then module four, they're all in Summerlin, and in addition to life, they're also via Zoom. And then module two, that's supposed to say Monday, the 26th. Um, so next Monday, and that one is Zoom only. Who's my proofreader? Where'd she go? She's hiding. I'll, I'll blame it on her. Or, or should I blame it on Stephanie since she's not here? All right, my uh, my license number for when you're writing uh, contracts. Sorry. Seven three eight three six. Zell, if you want to get your commissions by Zell, here is the. It's really easy to do. If your bank already has Zell, you just scan this one. I um, mean, there's flyers over there. If your bank doesn't have Zelle, you can still do it. You just download the uh, Zelle app. It's easy no matter what. All right, uh, next month, October 10th, is Blood Drive. Uh, what day of the week is that? That's a Monday. Um, it's all day right here. Uh, so uh, they are in desperate need for blood. So uh, if you can. <laughs> All right. Every Friday, Team Spirit Friday, wear your favorite team's jersey. Doesn't matter if it's uh, basketball, football, baseball, hockey. If you have an Aces jersey, I think we should celebrate that the uh, Aces. One first major championship for Las Vegas. I think that is awesome. All right, last Friday of every month is our happy hour. So it's a week from tomorrow, right? Uh, we will have happy hour. Uh, we will provide refreshments. We will provide uh, snacks. Uh, we have a good time. So just come three, three to five, the last Friday of every month. And after it. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Nothing, sorry. Oh, yeah. After home. My broker's open. You want to talk to I'm still detoxing. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I just have a flyer, but I guess. So, Rocio has a broker open that day. I'm too sorry. I'll go to you next Thursday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is, uh, so after our um, happy hour, um, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't drive. Um, um, she is doing a, uh, a broker open for this. Uh, it's just a little one point two million dollars. Where where is this at? Mountain Edge. Mountain Edge. So it's not far away from here. Either. Is there time to slow our I love it. Yes. Uh, today is last day for voting, folks. Vote for Rock Title. Vote for Realty One Group. Vote for um, just vote. 
get out the vote so you can vote uh, on as many devices as you have, as many cell phones, as many um, computers, so uh, vote. That's for rock title vote. Stacia, where are you at? I'm right so, here. Stacia brought the donuts. Ooh. Yum, who got a donut? Thank you. Thank you. Me. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I always feel a little bad when um, poor Stephanie often is like, she was at my, the meeting yesterday, and so then I, I tend to be repetitive, although you haven't heard it. Nobody. <laughs> she has. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, I try to be original, but I try to be original in each office just so that you can have some consistency. And so, um, yesterday at the uh, Summerlin office, they had a lady that is your like relocation and outside referral um, person. Her name is Bernadette Pacheco. She was amazing. Um, I just really, really like her. So, if, if just as a side note, if that's something that you're looking, because she can help with certain steps that you have to register for to help you um, with referrals from people that are moving out of state, out of the country, um, and she just she just has a you can tell she has a really kind soul. So I just look into her, you know, reach out to her and see what you know what you might need to do if you have people that are relocating and she can assist and how she can you know get you on board with that that portion of the team uh, but she was a lovely lady and and she was just just very honest she she's been with the company since 2008 um, I think that was really impressive and then there's a lady that she partners with that's part of more of the philanthropy side of things and one cares and she's been with the company since 2005 and that's when your company started so I was just really impressed with their longevity and their passion for what they do. And so um, I just wanted to share that. But on the flip side, uh, I just, I don't know that all of you know me. Uh, you may see my brochures and my flyers and you may see that I have donuts or this up there and you're like, oh, you get, or you get my drip emails or something. But I just, I just wanted to introduce myself to y'all again and, and let you know who I am as a person. And uh, so I've been a Las Vegas resident for just over 23 years, and I have been uh, rescuing and fostering animals for 18. So if you have a passion, uh, or if you have a desire to adopt, or you have a property that maybe you'd like to highlight an adoptable animal or two, let me know, and I'm happy to supply some flyers that would promote an animal, maybe my foster. Um, so that, because if I have to foster longer, then I don't get to foster another one. And so um, I have a little, uh, I'll, I'll see if Nicole can send her picture out later. She, I have a little, she's a Staffordshire pug mix. So she's about 28 pounds of Tasmanian devil, but she, she's <laughs> pretty cool so, <laughs> um, so anyhow uh, that you know that's been my passion although I love to help people I I really love helping animals um, and I always tell people that I, I'm honest to a fault and sometimes that means that I tell you what you don't want to hear but I'll always be honest and let you know what you need to hear when it comes to coverage if it's a claim that's denied or why it is or what why we wouldn't cover it um, or why we do I mean it's we cover a lot of our claims, but um, but I just think that it's important that you work with someone that you can trust to be honest with you. Um, I want to earn your business by honesty, not by, I don't have a back door to things to, oh, you know. <laughs> and that being said, there's sometimes a gray area in coverage, and so if you come to me and say, hey, I'm really confused by this and why it, why it was declined, um, talk to me. Don't just stew and say, oh, I'm never going to use Old Republic again. Um, how many times has, over your entire lifetime, has Burger King or McDonald's maybe screwed up your order and you've still gone back? And then over the time of your life, you've paid thousands of dollars to them. I'm not saying that it's the same financial amount that you're paying, but what I'm saying is, is we're humans too, and sometimes humans make mistakes. And so don't write something off just because of one long hold time or one declined claim. Um, you go back to so many things that have potentially wronged you in the past, and I would love the opportunity to make sure that, if nothing else, I can educate you 
about the why. Um, I'm not, you know, assembling your burger and then you say you don't like me, I say you don't want mayo and I don't want onions and nine times out of ten I get mayo and onions. <laughs> so, but I still go back because they're the ones that have my vegan burger. So, um, but so please let me, you know, give me that opportunity to look deeper into things. Uh, find out if there's something that we made a mistake on, like I said, it, or our vendor made a mistake. I mean, people are human and people do make mistakes, and and uh, I'm, I'm here to at least explain why, if not, maybe potentially correct it. So if you aren't working with someone that you like, trust, or have confidence in, I would love the opportunity to bring it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and I'm sorry, one more thing as I brought these up. So I still know that a lot of you haven't signed up for the agent toolbox that has a whole bunch of marketing templates on there that you can up, you know, put your own picture and your own company information on. Um, you And at least for the near future, you still have free printing, um, but they're all digital as well. So you utilize, this is just one of the things, and it changes each year, obviously. This is 2022, we'll have 2023 coming out soon. But utilize the... Um, customizable templates that can really benefit your business or whether it's just a marketing piece, whether it's something that you give to your buyers for a new home buyer and guides. And don't forget that I have door hangers for open houses and prospecting. Please remember that. These are free to you. Um, if you sign up for your agent toolbox, you can order them online. So um, I'll leave these behind, but you know, utilize the things that don't cost you money to help grow your business. So sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Connie, what is going on? You have anything for us? No, I'm just a reminder. I'm okay. take your time. All right. Just a reminder because red, reds are beautifully rising, and I'm speechless. <laughs> beautifully <laughs> rising. Beautifully rising, and we can buy down the reds with the help of the seller concessions. So just a reminder, okay? Just reach out to me, and I'll, I'll explain it more. Uh, we can buy down the rent. I know rates are rising, but with the help of the sellers, we can buy down the rent. Okay? When, when, we have when, options. when representing buyers and writing offers for buyers, don't be afraid to ask for concessions now. Mm -hmm. You know, for the last two plus years, we haven't been able to do that. Times have changed. Change. So yes. uh, don't, don't be not, afraid to do that. Yeah, not the price reduction, <coughs> seller concession towards yep. closing costs. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have Lanisha and Stephanie in the house. Well, Hi. almost in the house. Hi, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. I have someone special I'd like you to meet this morning. We're excited to introduce. I want everyone to meet Deborah. She is our new branch manager out of the Southwest office, and she's going to talk a little bit about herself, but we're super excited for you guys to meet her today. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Deborah Fernandez. I've been in the escrow industry for just over 36 years. I'm um, from California, and I just moved here January 30th. So, um, what did you do in California? I owned my own escrow company for 19 years. So um, it's it was great, but it was just time for for a change. You know, at this point in my life, it was time for a change, and you know, I welcome it, and I love um, you just. You guys have been so welcoming, the different offices that I visited. So thank you, it's, it's made the transition so much easier for me. Um, I am the branch manager at the Southwest office and um, my staff there is, is beautiful. You know, they couldn't have been more welcoming. Um, one of the things that I like to do as an escrow officer, I meet with my clients um, directly. I don't hire outside notaries. You know, I'll sit with them for opening and closing packages. If you guys ever have any questions, you feel free to contact me directly. I have my business cards, have my cell number, so I'm always accessible. And um, I look forward to meeting every one of you individually. Part nice working nice. with you. Thank you. Yay! Last day. Last day. We'd love just a quick vote. It's voterock.com. So if you could just pull up your phones real quick. <laughs> I've done this in every meeting. 
Boat, oh, okay. B-O-T-E-R-O-C. Yeah. Go to Google, Safari. Let's do it right now. She's way more aggressive. I you know. Guys I'm so good. 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 It's all good, right? Okay. We'll do it at our own time. No, we're going to do it now. We're going to do B O T E R O C dot com. Right there. Okay. You're going to give us a vote. Don't do Facebook. Just hit, you know. Vote. Vote. Vote R O C dot com. We would love your vote today. Today's the last day for it. We really appreciate it. If you have any other devices, feel free to do it on there as well. You can only do it once thank on one you. device. So thank you. That was all I had, Felicia. <laughs> all right, Canva. Anybody wanting to use Canva? We have a Canva 101 at 1 p.m. today. It is the Zoom for Rock University. So we'll put that up here. I actually won't be here to sign into it, but if you register, you can on the Rock University website. So that's today at 1 on a Zoom. You're assuming I'll be here. Oh, you're not going to be here? Okay, you're sneaking out too, huh? Okay. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I have is just, again, a reminder for October 11th, the CE self-defense class that's happening over at the Green Valley office, but it is three credits, 930 to 1230. What date? The 11th. Okay. Self-defense, yep. security, safety. Yeah. yeah. And we're hosting and sponsoring that, so Green Valley. Be, yeah, at the Green Valley office. And that is it. Anybody have anything else? Any questions? Any farming questions? We've been very, very, very busy with a lot of different types of farming. Anybody? Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, you guys. So Thank, much. You Thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> Stats with Emily. But anyway, he's not here. So uh, let's just take a look at stats real quick. It looks like it really hasn't changed much from last week. So last week, there's 10,239 listings. This week, there's 10,278, so it went up a bit. Last month, the, uh, we had, uh, uh, now we have 4.3 months inventory. Uh, it's the same, so uh, maybe with 45 days and 42, so, yeah, it really hasn't changed much, so let's move on. Um, so we will we provide these stats um, to you guys every week. So it'll be in the uh, in the social media and it will be in the newsletters that we put out. Feel free to share it in your social media as well. All right. Hey. <laughs> you want me to answer that? <laughs> So Robert, come on up. Everybody knows Robert. So Robert is a commercial agent here, and he has some uh, some tips on uh, the commercial business and how to refer. So take it away, Robert. Yeah, nothing too long here. Just wanted to kind of go over, like, if you guys have commercial referrals that you're interested in sending to a commercial agent, that's someone that Mark has approved to do commercial because we're not obviously a commercial office, so you have to get approval. Um, so don't do commercial unless you get approval. But if you do have a commercial client, you know, we don't want you to just tell them, sorry, I don't do commercial. So you're more than welcome to refer them to any of the commercial agents here at Realty One. And when you do so, I wanted to give everyone like some tips because one of the things I hear a lot from other commercial agents, one of the complaints is that when they get referrals, they get, sometimes they'll get a lot because you know, we're a residential office. So we've got three, 400 agents I don't know here, maybe a thousand plus in the company. And there's maybe a few commercial agents. So they could be getting a lot. That could be getting, you know, a dozen a week or something like that. Is that agents, the thing I hear the most, and it, I experience it as well, is that agents aren't really like screening them at least a little bit. And I understand the reservation sometimes too because agents are like, well, we don't do commercials, so how would we know how to screen them? You know, we don't know which questions to ask. And that's a legitimate, um, legitimate um, objection, I guess, to screening them. But what I would say is just kind of do it the same way you would with the residential, you know? Because some of the times the referrals I get, man, But you know, just asking basic questions like, you know, how much money do you have for this purchase or lease? Are you looking to purchase a building or lease a building? You know, um, what kind?
kind of business are you, you know, thinking about doing or, you know, operating? Um, what's your budget, you know? Stuff like that. Have you spoke with a lender? Most of the time that's going to be a no. But, you know, how much money, how much cash do you have available? Who are the main players? Because a lot of times the commercial, it's always a guy who's been sent out by the guy to go look for commercial <coughs> real estate, right? That's a difference when someone's buying a house, they don't send their aunt to go look for houses for them, they call you directly. So commercially, we have that quite a bit where, you know, oh, I'm, I'm the guy who's been uh, designated to find the commercial real estate for this guy or gal, you know? And so we need to know who that decision maker is, you know, a lot of times. It's really important because most of the times I can't get to the decision maker. And if I do get to the decision maker, the thing is, is the decision maker, their mindset is over here, the person who I'm talking to is way over here. And so it's like, I'm not even doing any productive here at all because this guy has different ideas than this guy or that. So that's important too, is you know, I know who the decision maker is. Don't be afraid if you feel in your initial screening process like this is going to be a waste of time. Don't be afraid to tell me, you know what, we do have some commercial agents, but I just don't have somebody that can help with that. You know, sorry, right? It's sometimes better, and I always tell people this, not all the time, but sometimes it's better to have no referral than to give a referral that doesn't really work out for you. You know, just to say, I don't have a commercial agent, but I'm here for all your residential stuff. If you need anything in the residential sector, please call me, you know, da 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 da, da. So, you know, don't be afraid to turn it down if you don't think it's good. Because what'll happen is, is if you wind up calling the commercial agents, the few that there are, and you're constantly giving them referrals, and then we get on the phone with the person, or we get on the phone with you, and we're like, hey, you know, this is your client, right? Like, that's why you're referring them to us, because you've probably sold them a home, or you probably dealt with them before. Um, you have a rapport, we don't, not yet, right? So it's better if you ask some of these initial questions, because you do have a rapport, it won't come off as offensive. I get on the phone and the first question on my mouth is, oh, that's great, are you looking to purchase or sell? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, who does? Well, it's this guy. Okay, I need to get in touch with that guy. Well, this guy's an asshole. Hang out, right? <laughs> that's, kind of, that's what's gonna happen, it does, right? Just to be frank. And it's like, no, I'm here to achieve goals, not to waste time, right? Like if, if I waste time, especially if I have a lot of Residential agents referring commercial business, you know, to me, and I waste time, and everybody's just a little bit frustrated, right? So do that for us. That would probably help out a lot. Another thing too, I want to give you guys a little insight is when you bring. This is human nature, so please don't just take offense to me saying this. Is when you bring five people over time, and you refer five people to somebody, and one guy uh, just bought his first condo. Two thousand dollars and wants to buy a million dollar building and has a business that he hasn't started yet and hasn't even got his business license yet and uh, realistically he was going to have his mom co-sign when she has equity in her house right <laughs> you bring five of those and i guarantee you the next time you call <laughs> okay i'll get right on it <laughs> back to golf <laughs> <laughs> So the thing is, think about it for a minute. Just do a little bit of screening, you know, get to know the person, ask a few questions. If you're afraid to ask them questions and you have a rapport with them, think about how it's gonna be when it's me, a stranger. Like, just like, no, 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 don't have time, sorry. So do a little bit of that. Uh, it'll go a long way with the agents you're referring to. Because we would rather, when you call, it's like, hey, Robert, this is so-and-so, and I sent you a couple, and they're not all gonna work out, but you sent me three, one of them worked out, the other two are good, they just weren't the timing wasn't right or something like that. And it's like, no, I wanna pick up the phone and say, let me call that prospect right away for them, you know? So that's what you want, you want that. If you don't want, you go back to golf. I don't even play golf, but I just thought it was funny. Um, another thing, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll wrap it up, is there's a follow-up aspect to it as well. Because a lot of times, it depends on the commercial agent you refer to. You should have someone that you have like similar values with and, and the way you do business and stuff. And 
even if you don't, maybe you can get along with. But for us, sometimes when I get them, and agents in this office, I mean, maybe even here in this room, can tell you that I'll call, they don't answer. I'll text, and they don't respond. I'll email them, they don't reply, right? And this goes on. And then it's like, well, I'm not going to sit here and call your contact every three days. Like, I'm so desperate that I have nothing better in my life to do but call you all day long, right? That's not operating from abundance. It's operating from scarcity, in my opinion. It doesn't work in real estate, in my opinion. But, so it never hurts for you, again, who has the rapport, to reach out to myself or to the other commercial agent and to the client and say, hey, have you guys gotten in contact yet? Sometimes just help them to facilitate that a little bit more. They'll say, oh, you know what? I know I did have some missed calls and some texts. I didn't know it was, so I just didn't respond. And then you're like, that was the guy I told you was gonna call you. <laughs> Could you call him or her, right? And so it might facilitate something that would have fizzled out naturally. A lot of times it doesn't. If they had a real need, they would have responded, right? But anyway, and then following up like, you know, down the road with the client and with the commercial agent, because it's not that the commercial agent isn't going to follow up. Again, it's going from a cold relationship to what you should have, which is a warm relationship, you know? And sometimes the warm relationship can facilitate warmth in the cold relationship. So the more involved you are with that kind of uh, follow-up and facilitation and pre-screening, the better and more likely you guys are gonna be to get us to close the deal so that you can get a referral check, right? Because that's that's the end game here. And referral checks on commercial real estate, they're like residential deals. They could be, uh, I did one this year, was the referral was 17 grand to the agent. You know? So I mean, referral checks can be pretty big. So, you know, don't, if, if, if I had a commission that was 15 grand that was coming to me and I don't have to do any of the work, the last thing I would do is say, here, call this person and then disappear. Because you're just throwing away 15 grand, you don't have to do any work, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Like none. If you're doing that in the house, you spend 40, 60 hours at least, right? So why not spend a couple hours with some follow-up, asking some initial questions, just kind of, you know, weeding it out. If you feel like when you're asking the questions, But they're, <laughs> they're open to it, and um, they're asking you stuff like ROI, AMPM side, like almost LOI, and you're like, I don't know what that means. Well, you're not supposed to know what that means. You're not a commercial agent, you're a current commercial agent. So okay. just tell them, hey, I know uh, BTI, and I know FHA, and I know VA, but I don't know LOI. And but ROI. shouldn't I know that stuff? No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Um, you you could you could with time you could understand that stuff, but what I'm saying is, is you don't need to, right? It's just like I have people. I've been I didn't let you guys know. For those of you who don't know, I've been licensed in January will be 20 years. So I've been commercially certified for I think seven years, and you know every year I finish in the we finish in the top 10 myself. I have one other person on my team, so. It's been a career for me. This isn't just, people will call me about lending questions, about title questions, mm -hmm. and I know some of the general, but believe me when I tell you, I have no problem with telling people, that sounds like a lending question to me. Let me get you as a lender, right? And here's the reason why you wanna do that. It's better for you to send them to a professional who gets that answer right, than it is for you to try to fake it until you know it, and say something wrong. Because you can lose face that way, and then they'll say, well, you know, this person told me this, and I'm not gonna get you anything. Just give you wrong advice or something. Uh -huh. Does that make sense, Diana? Yeah. I answer your question? Uh, you don't need to know 
what you should say is, hey, you're talking commercial language. Let, yeah. me, let me set you up with Robert. He's a commercial agent. He can answer those questions. Right? Okay. Make sense? Yeah, I didn't know you then, though. So well, now it's probably too late. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Next, so next time. You're prepared yes. for next time. All right. Do you ever been on government projects? Been, no. No. Would you ever? So I'm, this is this is an off base, but I just saw they're trying to get four 11 to 15,000 square foot buildings in, the, in Las Vegas for a 10 year lease starting 2024 with build out and tech. And that sounds like a pretty good commission check for Gilbert and Charles. Yeah, probably would be a pretty good commission check. Uh, not something I do, no. So like there's all kinds of commercial agents, like in all honesty, if you're at a commercial, if you're with dealing with a commercial brokerage, you're very specialized in commercial. It's not like residential. It's really weird because we like little <coughs> condo, townhome, high rise, family, manufacturer, land. like we'll do all this stuff, right? And it's all kind of, they're not, like you'll go to some commercial firms where they have a department specifically that does apartments only, right? That's all they do. They won't touch anything else, right? They refuse to. You'll have some that you're used to leasing, right? The leasing specialists, you'll have some that are warehouse. And so they're very specialized. So for the purposes of what we do here, or what I do here, it's not like my primary focus. I still do residential. So what I'll do is I'll pick and choose which type of transactions I'll work with, depending on the client and what the needs are and if it's something I'm comfortable with or not. You know, um, generally it is a little bit of all, but I have to be a little bit selective. You know, So if I get certain things like that, I probably wouldn't even try to do that because I, would I mean, that's a lot of prep work because it's just a request a bit. It wasn't, it's not even a referral, but I was like, someone should get on that because that's, like, right. that's going to be a good And I would one. imagine that would take a commercial firm. They have teams in commercial firms. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, yeah, I do uh, apartments and it's like, I have six people on my team and they're all like on all the listings because they all were working together as a team. So, you know, and they, they put quite a bit of resources into what they're doing. So, yeah, like you said, so for, for myself or probably the agents here, we just are more, more times than not, what we're doing, the reason that I got into commercial real estate, and I, I might be getting a little too personal, so Mark, cut me off if you ever want to, is that over the years of doing residential, your commercial clients come to you, right? And they say, hey, you know, I'm interested in buying a building, and I have a couple buildings in mind, and you're like, <laughs> help them out because they refer you again they're warm you have a rapport with them they like you they want to work with you they prefer to work with you uh, you don't you're not necessarily comfortable giving them a commercial referral because like I said if I give a referral and the person and, and them don't get along and they have a bad experience from that situation somewhat I always feel like there's always some little reflection on me whether it's conscious or subconscious there's some little reflection on me someone is saying yeah, that guy Robert really wouldn't know because he should have referred me someone better, right? Or something like that. Maybe not, but that's always the way I think. Mm -hmm. So I always felt like, well, if I really need to learn this, I've been in real estate 12 years now. It's really like the back of my hand for me. So diving into something a little uncomfortable and learning it and getting some experience isn't a bad thing to do because I was experienced already in residential. So I started doing it to pick up where my clients, where there was a little overlap. Now, there's still areas of those referrals. You know, people will say, do you sell businesses, right? That's like business opportunity, we call it, I think. And I'm like, no, we don't do that. You know, do you have someone? No, I don't. <laughs> you know, it's like a liability nightmare. But anyway, there are certain things I still don't do within the commercial sector, but if someone says to me, hey, you know, I'm looking to lease a warehouse, I need 12,000 square feet. Okay, that's relatively simple. I've done a dozen or two leases, you know, so I can take care of that. And why not keep them within the, you know, my sphere of my business? So also what's happened is that residential agents who aren't approved to do commercial and don't care to do commercial, because it's a different piece, it's totally different. Um, they'll send them to one of the commercial 
approved agents, and we definitely do not ever take them from the residential line. We'll tell them, no, you go back to whoever referred if they start to talk to us about the residential stuff. So, yeah, so that's that's how I got there, and that's, no other questions? Yeah. We didn't right. contact him, so. Okay, yeah, I'll give you, you a, have a card? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Robert. So, a couple things, as Robert mentioned, uh, we have approved commercial agents, uh, residential agents, um, shouldn't be doing commercial and, and can't be doing commercial because it is a whole different piece. I'll tell you, I've never ever done a commercial deal. I've always just uh, referred out. So if you're looking for a commercial agent, Robert's a good one. Rick Bautista right here, he's a, uh, another one of our uh, commercial agents. And I have uh, maybe four or five um, others. So um, if you're looking for a commercial, uh, you know, if, if um, you're looking, come talk to me. And, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look you up or, or reach out to Rick or, uh, or Robert. All right, any other questions on that? All right, so next up we have Eric. Eric is a vast background in C-level management, seven-figure sales, marketing, branding, and business development. I'm not gonna read all of this. Yeah. I didn't even give you that. Oh. <laughs> this is Eric, and uh, he's got some uh, yummy candies over here. Cake bites. And, uh, cake bites. And he's not going to be talking about radiation. Uh, I'm about to just say missed uh, um, communication. It's radar. <laughs> thank you. I know you guys probably have more people at the meetings, and thank you for coming, because probably bored with home inspections. Probably saw that and people were like, I'm not going to that. No one wants to hear the same old, same old. So it's a topic that a lot of people, when I first started in 2014, said, oh, they're home inspection. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm Eric, I'm with WDHI. Our company is a little different, like Building One Group is different than any other real estate. By the way, Eric is the one that gave us the Texas State right. Brazil. We, don't let don't let me forget to do that drawing. And if you haven't signed in, you better sign in if you want an opportunity. So we're a little bit different. Most of the companies that you guys are used to are sole proprietorships, or they're an LLC who are a local franchise of a national company. So we're structured a little bit different. We're C Corp. We're here in Nevada. Arizona and Utah, and then also structure the transition into franchising. We own a tech company, so we're going to be creating our own enterprise software, <clears throat> inspection software, and an agent mobile booking app. Once we deploy those into the franchise, we're going to open up a software as a service company, and we're going to offer those softwares to the rest of the inspection companies throughout the world. So a little bit different than you guys. We have a call center. When you or the client call in, we take that call, take that information, we contact the other side, you don't have to do that. We educate them on who we are, when we're gonna be there, and what we're going to do. So the process is a little bit different. Now, three of you in your bags, if you will politely reach in your bags, have a $10 Amazon gift card. Oh, shit. And it's orange, has a little Oh, you got one? You got one, two, there should be one more. One more? One more? There's a third one? Anybody over here? Thank you. Oh, got one over here? I know someone over here got one. It's a four-year card. Unless someone took it. Oh, they have got one. What is it supposed to be? Charity. So it's a $10 Amazon gift card. Oh, you got it. That means I got it. Just a simple thing. Yeah. Oh, the third one right there. 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 You know, somebody look for it. Somebody look for it. See? I'm saving you the time. So the joke about our company about this, when I first started WDHI in 2014, I did my first presentation, and everyone just stared at me and didn't even go into the bags. So the second time I said, wow. hey, I got to give something away as the icebreaker. So when I did that, everybody reached into the back. This is awesome. So just a little thank you. We know there's over 800 licensed inspection companies. 
And for you guys, you can spend time with us. We're just grateful for that. And sticking with that same theme, if you look at the flyer that's in the bag that we provided for you, on the right-hand side, there's another Amazon sign on there. And we have a Realty Rewards Loyalty Report, uh, Program. And if you call in the inspection, we will take an email from you. You mentioned that program, and we will give you a $10 Amazon gift card each time that you call in the inspection and mention the rewards program. Another extra special thank you, because we know you can use anybody throughout the valley, but we want to know that you're important, that we thank you for your client and being able to build a relationship with us. Towards the top, it talks a little bit about us. Uh, it says 30,000 inspections. We're actually approaching a little over 45,000 inspections. And that's in between residential and commercial. And that's in between Nevada, Arizona, and Utah. And when we first started out here, a lot of companies were like, hey, there's a lot of radon issues. So the map in front of you all, I'll go over that later on. But that is a map that UNR did a test on Clark County. One in four homes, highly contaminated. Bigger picture is across the country is one in 25. 25,000 plus people are dying annually of radon, not radiation. Radon is a natural gas from the breakdown of uranium. And before we were called Sin City, we were called Atomic City. It was a testing facility, tested bombs above the ground. And that being above ground, the uranium was crossing the entire valley. So why so, are we taught not to, that it's not really required, and like, I don't have any clients that have ever, I've had one that had a radon test. I'm glad you said that. And so, that cool. when we first started out in 2014, everyone said, you guys are just crying wolf, you want to sell your test. That's not true. It's now, because we've been doing it so long, as of 2020, it's now in your disclosure notice. So you can no longer say, I don't know what radon is, I didn't know about that. You have to educate yourself and then educate your clients. We'd like to see it become actually a waiver where you educate the clients, they don't want it, they sign the waiver, takes brokerage, brokering you out of it if there's a lawsuit. So that's something we want to make sure that we get input in, but it's been tough because a lot of people aren't aware of it, but it's starting to become a big popular thing. Now below the information about us is our pricing. We started at 280, we want to make sure that we're fair and that we're also giving an excellent service for that price. On the left-hand side, you'll see some of our endorsements, some of our accolades. We all have LVR members, so you don't have to lock up, you don't have to let us in. When I first started out here in 2014, they said, if you don't have access, I won't call you. That was the first thing I made sure we did. <laughs> because we don't want to inconvenience you. Plus, being an LVR member, we're held to a higher standard. So any type of complaints that would normally come in not only goes to our company, but goes to LVR as well. So that's another thing that's over us. We wanna make sure that we protect that. Underneath that, we have our QR code. You can scan that, it'll take you to the, our homepage, our website, and you can go ahead and click to book an inspection, put the information in, save it, we'll take it from there. Now over into the middle of that is our ancillary services. We do pool and spa inspections. Yes, we do. I get that text, call, email all the time. So it yeah, doesn't. Kind of, a lot of people do the full. It doesn't inspection. even matter if it's above ground. Periodically, I go on inspections to spend time with the inspector, so I can learn about it because I'm not a certified inspector. I have the funnest job in the company. I get to take kick bikes and say hello and visit with you all and have fun. So I'll go on these inspections, and there's one I went on was a above ground pool and jacuzzi. So they open the door of the jacuzzi, they see all the spider webs, they start crawling in there. I'm like, yeah, I can see it from here. I'll just stay out here. Not going in anything. So we will even inspect above ground pool and spa. Um, beneath that is where we're getting into our environmental testing services. We do asbestos. We don't get a lot of calls for that. What we get a lot of calls on is meth screening, also uh, mold and air quality, and radon. Mess screening, we were told the first week, you guys are wasting your time, no one's gonna call. Okay. We did three inspections for those screenings for meth. Uh -huh. We found a full blown lab, mm -hmm. the third one. Unfortunately, the potential buyer backed out. What so now. A full blown lab? Huh? What do you mean a full blown lab? Like it was just that much so stuff in the air? There was an actual lab in that house prior to. 
They were cooking meth. And mm -hmm. it, was it that the house was vacant? Yes. And so how this happens is potential buyer walk up to the home and neighbor says, hey, there was a drug bust next door. I think it was a meth lab. So when they call us, we don't upsell our service. They say, hey, when you're doing the home inspection, can you do a meth screening as well? So when they go in, they're looking for nothing, usage, or full-blown lab. So this third one that we did, they cooked in the garage thinking it wasn't going to go through the rest of the house. And unfortunately, it was in the entire house. What was it in the air? Or the so it goes through the major duct system. Oh, the air duct. So that buyer backed out. And then from there, they have to hire a company, the seller, to come and scrub down the ducts, scrub down the inside of the home, get rid of anything that's porous. Now, the unfortunate side to that is how expensive that process is. And unfortunately, if they do not clear the home, you do have to tell them, they have to disclose it to the next potential buyer. However, if they clear the house, which we have no contaminant laws in Nevada, 40 states do, we don't have meth contaminant laws, radon at all. So there's nothing governing how low they need to go when they do the meth cleaning. They try to get it where it's little. So that means you can get high? What ends up happening is, let's say you don't clear it, you it's have, definitely let's say you have, have, you have breathing it's issues, high, yeah. you can have <laughs> health <laughs> for some future. <laughs> so that residue is throughout the entire house. Wow. Due to the duct system. Wow. And sometimes they even have to replace it depending how bad it is. So there is meth out here. We work with the DEA, so we actually do some of their testing, um, and we use their lab. So the test results are definitely accurate. Um, and if we find a lab for them, they go ahead and they tape off the house. They do all kinds of crime scene, all that kind of stuff. So that's meth. So I want to make sure you do know it's here, and it's in prominent areas. So you're thinking Breaking Bad, like Grump trailers way out in Boulder City. No, Mountain's Edge. We've been in, go ahead. I couldn't quite hear, how does it impact the prospect or the future client? The, yeah, so, as far as health-wise or purchase? Just, yeah, if they're backing off, why would they back off? How does it so here it is, say you have a potential buyer, we do the home inspection and we do a meth screen. And the meth screen comes back saying that there was a lab where they were cooking meth here. The buyer's going to say, no thanks, because here's why. It gets a stigmatism, because in their mind, they're thinking, this was a drug house, could have been potential crimes there, yeah. and there was cooking meth in that house. But it's like tapers talking to the air. And all the air. So the other side of it is they're thinking about health issues. Even if they bring it down, are they going to bring it down to a level that I can live with, or my loved ones who may have an asthma or some type of health right. issue? So you have the criminal aspect, and then you also have the health aspect. So if they don't clear it, then the next potential buyer, they have to explain all of that, that it was, and it will be disclosed. Yeah. Most times they'll clear it, so they don't have to have the <clears> issue. <throat> um, and then the next potential buyer has no idea, unless they talk to the nation. <laughs> we can't do anything about that. Um, yes? Do you guys um, do roof inspections? So when we do a general inspection, and because, I don't know if you guys know this, home inspectors aren't experts. They're generalists. I always get that. You guys are the experts. No, we're not. We're generalists. So what will end up happening in that general home inspection, <laughs> if it's safe, we will traverse the roof and inspect it. Same thing with attic. As long right. as it's safe, we will go through the attic as well. Okay. Which you'll see more stains or any issue of water intrusion from inside than on top of the roof. Um, and we don't certify the roofs. I get that call all the time. Yeah. Can you guys certify oh, my roof? That's when you have an expert to do that. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about, which is a hot topic here, mold and air quality. There is a huge issue with lawsuits. I don't know if you're aware of it. There's one law firm that chases all of the cases. So what will happen is they'll hire a company like ours. They have a work order they have to sign. And in there, we have a mold and air quality recommendation. They will say, no, wait, these are flippers. So we do the inspection, everything's great, they get the house, now they start tearing it apart. The 
started ripping the floors, ripping the walls, and they're like, wow, there's mold. We need to sue. That's the first thing. Not so what, sue yourself. Not what the problem <laughs> is, who's fault it was. So they say, we need to get a lawyer. Yeah. So what they do is a blanket lawsuit. And they will name title, mortgage, agent, brokerage, broker, agent, home inspection. Home inspector should have caught it. Well, no, because that's not part of the general home inspection. And two, you waived it to not have a mold on air quality test. Who owes it to the agent? So they will look at from us, they'll say, we're suing everyone, but it starts with us. Because you go back and look at our paperwork, we recommend that. So we've been in, named in three of these. One, when they got all the information from the law firm, they just dropped it. The other two, we're finding out what the law firm is doing because no one is fighting it. They're saying, hey, if we can get 10, 9, 8 people, E and O to pay a certain amount, we'll get this amount. And that's what's going on right now. I can't name the law is firm. The but, brothers? Huh? Is this the Bokley Brothers? No. <laughs> and I'm not going to name who it is because we don't want to slander anybody. However, but I want you to be aware of that because mold and air quality, from one aspect, is a hazard for someone who's moving in and has issues. For you and for your business is the lawsuits that's going on. You will have no idea, You 10 deals later, now all of a sudden you get a letter saying you're being sued. You're named it with all these companies. So the unfortunate side is most people are waiving mold and air quality tests. And these are flippers. So their intention is to tear the home apart. And I know they say, well, didn't you guys use an x-ray camera? There's no such thing as an x-ray camera. And what they're referring to is infrared. And if there's no changes in temperature, there's nothing to see. So if we were doing an inspection, a general inspection and saw water, staining or anything like that, we would use an excess moisture meter, and then we would use the camera to back it up, and it would show if there were some issues. These are issues that are under the carpet, in the walls, and we're not, we're not doing an intrusive or destruction inspection. We don't break a wall, we don't tear carpets up. So that's something you guys want to make sure that you are familiar with what's going on, because these are flippers. So you might have clients, investors that are flippers, so you be aware that that's going on. Last but not least, radar. The maps that are sitting in front of you is a, com a combination of UNR and EPA getting together saying, hey, there's issues in Clark County, but no one's addressing it on radon. Radon is a natural gas that's colorless, odorless. You wouldn't even know if it was in the house and you were breathing it all day, every day. But it only comes from uranium breaking down. The unfortunate side is when they the developers buy land here, they will test. But when it's time to go to develop, they can use filler dirt from anywhere. So we get hired by clients that will say, hey, I want to buy, I got a brand new home, but I want you to do a radon test. The developer says, no, we already did that when we bought the land. But did you test the dirt that you brought in to fill in? Uh, no, because there's no law regulating that. They can buy it from Utah, they can come from Arizona, anywhere. So we've tested brand new homes that are toxic levels with radon. So the issue, what UNR did was come and test all the homes in Clark County. One in four homes, like I was saying earlier, are contaminated, highly contaminated. So red and orange are highly contaminated. You'll see more red on the mountain ranges. That's natural radon. Unfortunately, we get calls on homes that are 10 million, 6 million, they say, hey, when you're doing my home inspection, can you do a radon test? Like, we don't even need to take your money. You live, you will be living on radon. No, 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 I want to do the test. So they'll do the test. They leave a device in the home for 48 hours. They give them strict advice on how to do this test. And when we come back, we gather it, we get the information, and we explain it. On these homes on the mountain, it's so bad that they have to have a mitigation company come in and put a mitigation system that constantly pipes it up from the ground out into the air. Once it hits the air, it dissipates. Our problem in Clark County is we're building on slabs that are trapping the uranium under it. So if you find that there's an issue in the valley, they'll pipe normally to the side of the house because it's tension-based slabs. That motor will pull the air out and it's done. But because we used to test above ground, that uranium is across the whole valley. And if you look dead smack in the middle of the map, 
8,146. Red is for me. Wow. So I was giving this for the first time in 2014 with Lee Barrett, and Lee said, hey, my office is in 8,146. I said, yeah, that's right. He goes, oh, yeah, I need to get a test. <laughs> so we could test a building or a home, and it'd be highly contaminated, but next door, that house is nothing. So the remedy is, so they test, test positive, it's dangerous amount, what's the remedy? So, that's the bad news. The good news is this, is it can be fixed. The problem that we're running to here is not, we don't have local companies. So they're calling California and Salt Lake City. These are companies that if it's in the valley, it's just a one and done, 1,500 to 5,000. You're looking at, if you're on a mountain, you're talking probably upwards five to $10,000 to put that system in. The good news is, Either system is going to get rid of it. The one on the mountain is constantly going to pipe it out so you're not breathing it into your uh, air ducts in your home. The one in the valley is going to be a one time, they're going to dig into the ground, and they're going to get rid of it. So it can be dealt with, but I've had companies uh, call me, they might be one month behind, a couple weeks. Some I've seen two months behind because they're coming from California or Salt Lake City. So go ahead. Yeah, how is it possible that this zip code 89146 is red and all around a white? So think about an atomic bomb going off. It's not like the uranium is left in <coughs> flat across the land. There's bits and pieces that land in areas, and some more than others. That's why the testing, you'll see some that are white, some that are yellow, some that are orange, and some that are red. The red and the orange are highly contained. So these are things that I want to make sure that I share with you guys because you need to educate yourself and educate the client. There are do-it-yourself kits, but you can get a false positive. So we've had people buy a home and do it themselves. They call us back and say, hey, I did a test and it was highly contaminated. Can you guys tell me how to deal with it? You did it yourself. We didn't do the test. So if we're hired, we're the one that's going to make sure that they understand how the test is done and the readings as well. A lot of times people say, oh, you're just trying to sell more testing. That map was not made. Do you see WDHI on that map? No. <laughs> that's UNR. So this map I want to make sure you guys have so you educate yourself. It's in the disclosure notice as of 20, uh, 2020. So you can no longer say, I don't know anything about radon. You need to educate yourself on it and educate the client. That way they can make a decision based off the information that you gave them and you're the source of the source. You're not the expert on it. But this map, even if you just share it with them, they'll see that the potential home where they want to buy is in red. It's kind of common sense they should get a test done. It's something that you want to make sure that, because they might have family that already have issues. The people that are bought, dying in America annually, 25,000, never smoke a cigarette and do not have second home, a uh, secondhand smoke, and they get lung cancer. And I even met a nurse who I was in a talk with like 300 people. She came up to me and said, hey, there's a medical map just like this for Clark County, where all the hospitals and clinics are fine diagnosing people with lung cancer. And she said, this is exactly the same. Oh, wow. So I was like, I need to get that. So I've been trying to get that. Because that's something that will just prove more than what UNR had found. So it's just something you want to make sure you educate yourself and your clients. Um, last but not least, at the very bottom, we have our Heroes Discount Program. That's for active military, veterans, and first responders. Um, whether you're calling in or they're calling, just let make sure that we know that and they need to show proof prior to or at the time of inspection. At the end of the inspection, we'd like to take that last hour from you and the client. That way we can walk through and explain everything um, and answer the client's questions. We do not want you answering the questions because then you now have liability. Brokerage has liability if the information is incorrect. And then after that inspection within 24 hours, they'll get that report and then we follow up with an uh, email to say, how do we do? So we hear how we did. If there's an issue, can you resolve it? But with the uh, Heroes Discount Program, it's $25. We want to make sure we take care of them and take care of us. We did over 1,300 inspections for veterans alone last year. So, any veterans in the room? No? Okay. So, any questions? No? Is this pricing updated? Because yeah. I just did an inspection and it was more than that. 
Is it updated? What do you mean by that? This and the website is the exact same. Oh, mine was 850 for 5,100 square feet. Wow. And it depends on what inspection you had, how many square feet. Oh, because there's a new build, maybe? Not quite sure. But this is the pricing, though. This is the up to date. I'm the one that gets the flyers, there's no one else. So. And then the website is exactly the same. Okay. Well, and then if it was different than that, you yeah. should call the office and explain. I have this flyer, this is what happened. And then they no, I think they did explain something, some oh. reasoning. I just didn't know the price was on hand. Okay. And one last thing I want to say is this. When you get an a offer accepted, when should the inspection be called in? Immediately. Perfect. The reason why I ask that question, I get this. What's your turnaround time? I get that all the time. It's it's a difficult it's a difficult question. Here's why: you have a schedule, client has a schedule. Seller might be occupied or occupied renter, and then we have a schedule. We want to make sure we can get you in as soon as possible. I get the text emails all the time. Hey, can you do one today? Tomorrow? What? Are you serious? <laughs> so that's the reason why I ask that. I want to thank you guys for having us here. Um, we are going to be having a raffle, but one last thing. There's no us without you. Hey. <laughs> All right. Who wants to win a $100 million card? Well, here's catch. you got to take me. <laughs> All right, let's see. Just kidding. Oh, I was going to do it. I'll take the bread. I'll just have the bread. All right. So the number is eight. Thirteen. Oh, 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 it's me again. 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 It's me again.